Hey everyone, Military Gun Guy here. I wanted to quickly show you how to fit, uh, actually not that quickly, but we'll see, how to fit AK-47 stocks to new receivers. Um, with the importation of all the kits, you're invariably going to get a new receiver, whether you bend it from a flat or you um, actually buy a pre-bent one. These both are pre-bent. This is for an AK-74. This is for an AK-47. Regardless, you're going to have to actually fit your buttstock, uh, even your handguard, uh, to uh, the receiver itself. Um, I've seen a lot of people that just kind of jam it in there. Um, I don't really recommend that because you kind of want, you don't want it loose, but you want it to be a nice snug fit. Um, this is an AK-47 receiver. This is for a Romanian. This has already been refinished. I do recommend that you do this uh, before you finish it, but I tend to do things a little bit backwards. Um, so a couple of things that you're looking for is what I try to do is I'll put the stock into the receiver, okay? And what I'm looking for is about a thumb width of gap around the edge, roughly. This one is mostly even, it actually looks pretty good. A couple areas on top, you can see where it's a little bit wobbly, but a couple areas on top need to be filed a little bit. Um, what I also would like to do is I'd like to roughly mate the trunnion, uh, the tr uh, not mate it, but hold the trunnion up to the receiver in approximately the location that it's going to fit. Um, with this one, if there's an issue with the holes, you can actually re-drill the holes, and, or you can epoxy them, sorry, and then re-drill them, and that'll give you just as good of a fit. Um, some areas you need to pay attention to are right about here. Uh, this is nice and flat. This is not too bad. You're not looking for perfection in this area, but sometimes what you'll actually see is uh, if you're encountering resistance getting the receiver into the stock, a lot of times it's this little part right here is a little bit too sharp and you can see in the video where we need to relieve right this face right here just basically just square it off um, I don't like using Dremel tools for this they tend to be a little uh, I don't know I mean, it's, no matter how good you are you're gonna still have an issue at times you're gonna you know it's gonna walk on you uh, again the same thing for this AK-74 stock you can see there's a nice pretty even gap uh, I might close the gap just a little bit uh, this one has I've already worked on. You can see where I've done it uh, and I've made it. You can see the, the, the fits a little bit better. We can actually cut it a little bit more. Uh, I have a nice even gap around here is what I'm looking for. Uh, the tools that I like to use are files. I love files because they cut quickly and they actually will give you a little bit more control than say a Dremel or a belt sander. Um, this is a rasp. This is a dual edge so it's got a uh, concave rasp then a flat rasp. Uh, and then this is a bastard style file. Uh, you can tell I've used a lot of it. Um, I like with this edge as well because if you're looking for a nice clean edge, you know, say for here, you can use this file just like that. And again, you're going to use it fairly, and you can see maybe this gap there uh, that I'm going to try and clean up. It's not quite even. And you can probably see it there where it's a little bit concave and that's from using the rasp. So what you just do is very lightly, Go back and forth, and you're using the file to square up that spot to where it'll fit flush with your receiver. And you don't have to put a lot of pressure, you don't have to really even kill it when it comes to um, actually making this fit. You just want to let the file do the work. Um, some files will cut quickly, you know, with the rasp. You can go in if you'd like, and you can hit this area. And you'll always want to go and keep and constantly test fit it. Um, I'm gonna put the trunnion into the receiver lightly. I'm gonna line up my back edges right there. And then I'm gonna see how this fits in. Ideally, you know, if you wanna do this once it's riveted, you can. Uh, I do like to kind of loosely fit it, knowing that once I actually rivet everything together, it's going to fit nicely. So, this isn't bad. This is about where the rivet hole will be, or the rivet itself will be holding the trunnion in place. Um, the gap is a little bit bigger than I like. More than likely, you can see a little spot here that needs to be cleaned up. Uh, this part's nice and even. Uh, this part's nice and even. And there also may be an issue within the trunnion itself, within the inside lip that needs to be cleaned up a little bit. So again, you're just going to take your rasp, your file, and you're just going to clean up that edge. And you can kind of see where it's not quite hitting. So you're just going to keep hitting that until you get 
a nice even edge. The file will leave a nice clean edge for you. It'll leave a straight edge for you. So that way when you actually make your buttstock or the handguard, whatever, to the receiver, you'll have a nice flat surface to work with. See, that's a little bit better. Um, I'll hit it a little bit more, make sure that's nice and even. You know, again, there's still some spots that needs a little bit of help. That also could be within the trunnion itself that'll have to clean that area up. But this is kind of what you're going for. Again, you want a nice even gap all the way around. I usually use like a thumbnail, a thumbnail width roughly, which is about what I use for uh, fitting the, uh, the top gas tube uh, to the rear sight and the front gas port. So, for quick, for quick cleanup, you use the rasp, and then for final kind of, I guess, polishing work, I use the file. You know, stop, check my work, and then this area can be touched up with a uh, leather dye, and then you can respray the whole thing if you want. Um, you know, for this demonstration, I already finished this. Um, but in reality, I would uh, honestly, I would recommend doing it before uh, before you refinish, so that way you can do any potential damage to it, clean it up, and fix it. Again, this one doesn't look too bad. Uh, I'm going to try to eliminate. This isn't terrible, but I'm going to try to eliminate this where there's too much of a gap there. So what I will do is use the rasp again and just cut that area down. Okay, a little bit better, not too bad. A little bit better there. Sometimes you may have to even angle it and give it a bit of an undercut because those trunnions are kind of cut at a slight angle underneath. You see where it's kind of cut? It's, it's not straight straight, it's actually cut at a little bit of an angle. Hopefully I'm showing that in the video, I'm not just showing myself. And again, you can check your fit. Okay, not too bad. Looks good overall. Probably need to clean this area up a little bit, clean that area up a little bit. And then you do another test fit with your trunnion installed in your receiver. Uh, if you want to stick a rivet in there just to kind of help hold the trunnion in place while you set everything up, uh, you can do that. That's a good way of doing it. So you can see that with the trunnion installed, even without the rivet, that it's actually not fitting quite as well as we would like. So we're going to pull this and we'll keep fitting it. I'll get a little off the top. Something else you can do if you like, you can take a Sharpie and you can put a Sharpie, you can Sharpie all of this and you can test fit it. And a lot of times the, um, the trunnion will actually remove the Sharpie mark, giving you an idea of where it's tight. This one I haven't really fit too well as far as uh, done a lot of work on it. So this one's going to need a bit more work in terms of using the rasp. You can see how quickly it cuts. And it gives you a nice flat surface. Which to work with. You don't really need to worry about this. Typically, those areas don't need any sort of fitting. Uh, you also may need to cham you may need to kind of chamfer this edge a little bit as well. So just hold your rasp at a 45 degree angle, cut that area down a little bit, and test fit. This does tend to get a little bit tedious. Okay, it's getting better. It's fitting a little bit better. Uh, we'll still have a couple of areas we need to see. Again, like I said, you don't really need to worry about the front as much. I don't know if you can see down in there. Um, just because this doesn't really hit um, as much as it would um, on the very front of the buttstock. Um, this looks decent. There's a nice, fairly even gap there. I don't like this gap here, though. Um, if you close this too much, you may have to actually dremel this little part here if you want to kind of make it a little bit more uniform. Um, I like these things to be as close to perfect as possible. Uh, and then go from there.
Um, the rasp will leave some kind of rough looking cuts on the wood. Um, no one's going to see it underneath. If it does bother you, you can always use the, uh, the file to clean everything up as that will actually smooth a lot of the areas out. And again, you're not taking off a ton of material. You don't want to just grind this thing into oblivion and hope that it fits. You want to actually file it, rasp it, file it, test fit, see how it fits, check your gaps, see if your gaps are even. Uh, and obviously with wood you have to be a little bit more careful because you can't replace wood. You can only, you can only take it away. I mean, you can, but it looks like shit. Um, looks like this is actually going to be hitting here, so I'll probably end up dremeling this just a little bit, so that way we have a little bit better fit. There we go. So I'm actually going to try to close that gap, and you can see where it's not quite as even. This is actually how it was actually cut, so this one needs a bit more work uh, before it's going to be ready. As far as filing, you're going to want to use the cross-cut side. You can see this one is just one uh, the, the files cut is going one way, whereas this one it's actually going two ways. It's, uh, you can also use a brush to clean things up. Um, that way your, the teeth of your files stay nice and clean. Uh, wire brush usually works good, like a handheld wire brush, like a barbecue grill type brush. That will get in, kind of clean the, the teeth a little bit, keep them from getting clogged up as much. So this gives you an idea of how this works and how, or at least how I do it. You know, and little by little you'll start to see these gaps closing. And again, when you're done, you can touch this area up with leather dye, get it all nice and cleaned up, hit it with another coat of whatever top coat you use, whether it's shellac or, epox or uh, polyurethane or whatnot. Um, and then once it dries, once you, I mean, ideally you want to get this thing perfectly fit. So once that it dries, that it will actually be ready to install. You know, you want to get this pretty much perfect so that way when your final rifle is assembled you don't really have to mess with it as much so that's basically how to uh, fit an AK stock to a receiver uh, you'll be doing this if you um, get one of the kits that comes in um, to where uh, you'll need to actually fit it to the receiver in the rear trunnion uh, any questions at all email me militarygunguy702 at gmail.com I hope you like my videos uh, if you have any questions at all, hit me up, and please subscribe, and thanks for watching.